All right, so we're going to do things a little bit differently today. Uh, I've got a new microphone, so I'm hoping that'll take out some of the tinniness of the audio that's been going on. No one's complained yet, but uh, it bothered me when I reviewed the videos. And uh, rather than clarify a topic, almost every student who submitted her reflections really expressed a, a great deal of unease about either KM as a value, Vmax as a value, and not so much what those values mean or tell you, but as true numerical values, or talked about Lineweaver Burke as being a problem. So I, I gave individualized feedback and said there's tons of practice problems in the back of the textbook that you guys could use if you're interested in it. But I thought what might be the best way to spend this video from this lecture would be to go through a problem myself and show you how it would be solved. So that's what we're going to do today, and hopefully it'll help a lot of you out. So here's the problem I found. I just found this one online. So this is not from the textbook. You can still go ahead and practice with the textbook yourself. But this is how all of these problems are set up. You're given a, a set of substrate concentrations, and that's what we see here. You're given a set of velocities of the reaction at each of those substrate concentrations. That's what the V is here, individual velocities. And then this is an inhibitor question. So you're given the newly calculated velocities as well if uh, that inhibitor is present. So this is the velocity without the inhibitor, and this is the velocity with the inhibitor. So you could plot this data directly, the way it's given to you here, and you would generate a michaelis menten plot, the plot that curves and asymptotically approaches Vmax. But as we said in the lecture, we can't ever really trust that. So instead, we're going to do a Lineweaver-Burke plot, and that's exactly what the question asks for. So to do a Lineweaver-Burke, we need to do a double reciprocal plot. And that means we need to find the reciprocals of each of these values. So what you might be hearing in the background, a little bit of noise and things, uh, is me getting my calculator ready, because I'm going to have to do some very simple, but arithmetic that I can't do on scrap paper. So I'm going to need a calculator here to do this. So my first calculation is going to be to find the reciprocal of the first substrate concentration. So I'm going to do one on the calculator. I'm pressing 1 divided by, and then it's got to be 6 times 10 to the minus 6. I don't have a scientific calculator here, so I'm going to do decimal 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 6. So that's five zeros after the decimal point, and then a 6. I'm going to press equals. And I see that that is 166,666.66666. And I'm just going to abbreviate that here. Uh, so I'm going to keep track of this. 1 over the substrate concentrations. Right? That's what that's going to be. And this first value is 166666.7. I'm just going to round it. And then I'll go back to my question. And now it is... 1 divided by whatever that number is. So that is point zero 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 one, And that is 100,000. So that's my next value. And then we go on from there. It's going to be point 1 divided by 1 divided by point zero 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 two, which should be 200,000. And it's not, it's 50,000 that shows me to do reciprocals in my head. So that's 50,000. And clear 1 divided by point zero 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 six, And that's 16,666.7 if I round it. Is And so one more to go here, clear, and that's going to be 1 divided by 0. 0.00018 equals, and that's 5,555 point, and we'll round to 6. 5,555.6. So those are our 1 over S values, and then we want to do the same thing, 1 over V. We go back to the question. And this will be a little bit easier. 1 divided by 20.8 is 0 0.05. We'll round it. <clears throat> 1 divided by 29 is 0 0.034. 
So you get the point. I mean, it's time consuming and it's not the most fun, but I'm just taking the reciprocals of every one of these values by hand. Uh, 1 divided by 45 is 0 0.022. One divided by sixty-seven point six is point zero one five. Again, if I round, and the last one is one divided by eighty-seven. Which is point zero one one. Point zero one one. And those are my one over v values. So all I did is I took these values that I was given in the question and I divided, I put them under 1. 1 divided by this number is this number. 1 divided by this number is this number. 1 divided by this number is this number. And down the line we go. And I wrote them down somewhere. I didn't write them on a page, obviously, because that wouldn't be something you can see. I could track them in Excel. But this is all you would do on a on an exam. And the calculator I'm working with is a very simple four-function calculator, nothing special. Now, I could plot these values on Excel and generate a best fit line, but that wouldn't be fair to you because I want to demonstrate how you would do this on an exam. So instead, I am going to plot this on graph paper the way I would expect you to be able to. Okay, doing this here. So, that's my iPad screen. And we're going to turn it into paper. Graph paper. Right there. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to make this a perpendicular graph and excuse my horrible straight lines. Never been good at that. But this is the kind of general plot we want. And we want to put our scales in. So for the... Well, um, y-axis, well let me do the x first. For the x-axis we're going to be going all the way up to about 166,000. Now that's pretty high. Our lowest number is 5,000, so 166,000. So I probably want this here to be 175,000. And I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 boxes. And so I'm counting these. 1, 2, 3, 4. I've got 17 boxes here. So if I make each of those 10,000, I should be in good shape. So that would be, this one is 10,000. This one is 30,000. And those are Ks. This is 50,000, 70,000. 90,000, 110,000, 130,000, 150,000, and then this last one would be 170,000, and that works for me. And it would be the same in reverse for the negative. So it would be 10,000, 30, and down the line we go. So that covers our 1 over substrate. Uh, the y-axis is going to be 1 over velocity, so let me get a feel for what that's doing. That's going from uh, 0.11 to 0.05, so really not much of a spread there. We can get a little bit more granular. So if we want this to be 0 0.05 itself right at the top, 0 0.05, and I'm counting boxes, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 is a nice even number. So let me move this one down to here. Uh, so that would be 0 0.05. And if it takes us 20 to get to there, then we can go... What now? It's been a long time since I set up graph paper. Probably the same for you. And so if it was... 10, we would go from uh, 0 0.05 to point, 0 0.005 to 0 0.05, but we've got 20, so we're going to go from uh, point 0 0.0025 all the way up. So that would make this point 0 0.005, point 0 0.01, point 0 0.02, point 0 0.03, point 0 0.04, point 0 0.05, point 0 0.05, point 0 0.06, point 0 0.07, point 0 0.08, point 0 0.09, point 0 0.10, point 0 
point zero one point five point zero two point zero two point five point zero three point zero three five point zero four point zero four five and then point zero five which is what we want. Uh, this is all very typical graphing skills, things you probably did in high school, and here we need them again for this practice. So we're pretty good now. We've got our scale, and we've got our axes set up, we can graph our data. So the first data point I want to graph is uh, 5,555 across from 0 0.011. 5,555 to around 0 .00, 0 0.01. So if I toggle back to the graph paper, I'm going to put that right around here. Right here. That's about 5,000, and that's at about 0 0.01. Next one, about 16,000 more or less, and 0 0.015. So 16,000, 0 0.015. So I went ahead and put that dot right here. Uh, that's definitely 0 0.015 right on the line, and 16,000. If this is 20,000 right here, I'm putting 16,000 right around there. So this is our first point, this is our second. The next point is 0 0.022 and 50,000 even. So 50,000 is easy for me, and 0 0.022 is pretty straightforward. So here is 50,000 right on the line. Uh, this is point. 0, 0.225, so point zero two two would be right around there, so that's my next line, so one, two, three points. Next is 100,000 and point zero three four. 100,000 is right on this line, and point zero four four is going to be right short of here, so point zero four four is right around here, make a point. And one more to plot. No one's eager, more eager to be done with this than me. I trust, trust me when I tell you point, uh, I'm sorry, 166,000 and point zero five. So point zero five we know is right up here. We designed it that way. And 166,000 is right along here. So that's our point for that. So real experimental data, we see it doesn't form a perfect line, but it forms a good line all the same. And so now I'm going to draw a best fit line through that data. And I'm going to place a ruler right on my iPad. That shouldn't cause any problems, but if it does, I apologize in advance. I'm trying to find the best fit line that looks like it's about it to me. So let's see how I do it here. Not bad. Whoops. Not bad. So I would say that's the best fit line for this data, more or less. So now I'm go going to look for the y-intercept first. And I would say that the y-intercept is occurring pretty cleanly right here at point zero 0.01. So that means that 1 over v max equals 0 0.01. Now if I want v max, I have to find the reciprocal of point zero of 1. So I go back to my calculator, turn it on, and I'm plugging in 1 divided by 0 0.01 equals, and that's 100. So my Vmax value is 100, because my 1 over Vmax, the area where my line intercepts this graph, is 0 0.01. It's a little bit tougher here for the x-intercept. I'm going to go ahead and call that, and remember, this is all in the thousands. I'm going to go ahead and call that uh, negative... What do you say? Negative 32,000, I guess. So 1 over km, I'm going to say, is negative 32,000 as an estimate, which means km is the reciprocal of that. So I'm going back to my calculator. And remember, we're going to strip away the negative so it doesn't matter anyway. And I'm going to plug in 1 divided by 32,000. And I get point zero 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 three one two. And to put that in scientific notion, notation, that's going to be 3.12 times 10 to the minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
and of course that's in molar. So now I have a km. So if we go back to the data here, oh, did I shut that window? If we go back to the data, I know this is choppier than most of my videos, but I got a lot going on here, I assure you. We see that Vmax is 100. Well, that makes sense. We never go higher to 100, but we see that we are approaching 100, so that's a good Vmax. And Km, the concentration at which half of the molecules are saturated, is 3 times 10 to the minus 5, more or less. 3.12 times 10 to the minus 5. So that means between these two values is the, is the concentration of substrate where we've reached 50% maximum rate. Well, 50% of 100 is 50, and 50 lies between these two velocities here, and so we see that for sure uh, that is the right area or domain for us to have our Km. So, this is a line weaver burke plot of this data. And based on that line weaver burke plot, we were able to calculate Vmax as the reciprocal of the y-intercept, and Km as the reciprocal of the x-intercept, pretty easily from that. The hard part, if you could call it that, was just going through the trouble of getting the reciprocal values for each of these, and then, in addition to that, the hard part was also just coming up with the right graph to draw, the right scale. But those are very basic skills, graphing skills, that we should have by now. You draw your best fit line, and that best fit line gives you that data. Now, I won't do the whole thing because uh, of the time that we're facing here, but I do want to point out one more aspect of this. Here, you're given measured velocities in the presence of inhibitor. What you would do in order to measure this, in order to determine this, is you would take the reciprocals of these values as well. 1 over 12, 1 over 15, 1 over 20, 1 over 24, 1 over 28. And you would place those values here. And you would record them, 1 over velocities, with inhibitor. And you can plot those values as well. Those values would be plotted just as we plotted the ones before. It's the same substrate concentration. That's what this is telling you. At these substrate concentrations with inhibitor, you had these velocities. So you would plot those points on this graph as well, using these substrate reciprocals and the reciprocals of the velocities in the presence of inhibitor. And that would give you a different line. That line is going to do one of three things. It's going to intercept this graph at the same point on the y-axis as this line does. That means Vmax is unchanged. And if Vmax is unchanged, you have a competitive inhibitor. That line may intersect with this line, with this graph at the same x-intercept as this line does. That would mean that you have the same Km. And if you have the same Km, you're dealing with a non-competitive inhibitor. Or this line may, the, the line that you draw with the inhibitor may shift completely forward, may shift completely upward. So now it would be a line like this one that I'm drawing without a ruler, so forgive me. And a line like that would mean that Vmax went down and Km went down, and the only type of inhibitor that causes a decrease in Vmax and Km is an uncompetitive inhibitor. So when you plot this data with the inhibitor present on the same graph as the data without the inhibitor, you get a very clear indication of what type of inhibitor you're dealing with based on how that new line with inhibitor compares to the line you've already drawn. This is the perfect practice problem for this material on the exam. This is exactly what I will be asking you to do. I will be asking you to start with raw substrate values and velocity values, use those values to draw a line weaver burke plot just as I've done for you here, take the same values that you're given for the presence of an inhibitor, plot that inhibitor based line on the same graph, and with the graphs you've drawn, determine whether or not the inhibitor you're dealing with is competitive, uncompetitive, or non-competitive. If you can do this on your own, you're well prepared for this information on the exam. If you can't do this on your own, you should come see me as soon as possible so that we can clarify this material for you.